Okay, we are live for our seventh, no, sixth podcast. Uh, hello, my name is Darcy The Rock, and this is Terry Osti. Hi, Terry. Good afternoon. Hello. I, I, guess <laughs> hello. Is, uh, I guess I shouldn't say good afternoon because it may not be. That's uh, right. <laughs> you're you're listening to Agent Tech Mastery podcast that revolutionizes real estate businesses. I have sadly almost three decades in information technology, and Terry, you have almost, almost two, decades two decades as a real estate agent. Yeah, and we are your guides to streamlining operations, saving time, and boosting your revenue. Discover cutting-edge technologies, systems, apps, and a mindset for a profitable and integrated business. If you want to know how to get there, you are in the right place. Okay, today is a big one. We are going to be talking about business cards. Now, Terry collects way more business cards than I do, but I have seen um, thousands over the years of <laughs> So we do this podcast on YouTube so you can see us. So if you want to watch what we're showing you, you can go to the YouTube uh, channel, Agent Tech Mastery. But we know that you're listening on a lot of your favorite podcast systems, so you may not be able to see what we're talking about. So we'll, we'll try and verbally tell you as well. So we this topic came across when you and I were having a discussion on another podcast about business cards. And we thought, well, we'll just do a quick um, podcast about business cards. So Terry, number one, what's your take on business cards? So you know what? I, I really, really, really like business cards because <laughs> there's a tangible item that you can give to somebody, right? And yeah. I've heard lots of comments. I shouldn't say lots, but I've heard people say, Terry, it's 2024. Why would you have a business card? It's a printed piece of material. We're in the age of technology and blah, 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 right? Yeah. But I, I tell you how, if you have a, well, okay, if you have a really crappy business card, of course. Yes. You give me a crappy business card, guess where it's going? Yeah. <laughs> in the garbage, right? And by crappy, you mean like oh, yeah, done by... Uh, <laughs> uh, like it was printed uh, a printing company that... <laughs> Charged you two cents a card, and because you're cutting corners, and you're, you're allowed three colors only. Yeah, or white only with black the stock print. is really thin, and your yeah. twenty year old picture is on it. Oh, don't even get me started. <laughs> listen, people. Okay, listen, people. Linda, Linda. Linda. <laughs> I don't know if everyone gets that reference, but if you don't, go Google <laughs> Linda, Linda, because yeah. it's hilarious. Um, I cannot tell you how many times that I have a meeting with an agent and I look on their website or they given, I've got their card somehow and then I meet them. I'm like, uh, that's not you. <laughs> <laughs> or that's what you looked like 20 years ago and sometimes 30 years ago. <laughs> People, at least within the last five years, please, please, please have a current photo. Okay, so number one, if you're going to put a photo on your business card, which isn't a bad idea, um, I don't think. What's your thoughts, Terry? Um, it depends. I got a kind of a 50-50 yeah. yes or no. Yeah. Um, some people go, no, I don't want my face on my card and mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Some people, oh, yeah, I got to put my face on everything. <laughs> yeah, not sure so, about everything. But yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So but it's, people it's, might it's remember you if they open up a, or look at your card and go, oh, it's that person. But they won't remember you if you don't look like that. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. One of the things that happens, and, and if you ever go to a lot of conferences, you end up coming home with a big stack of cards, typically. Yeah. yeah. Um, and three or four days after the conference, when you finally get back to your desk and you have this big stack of cards you got to deal with, I can guarantee you, if there's not a picture on that card, you may not remember who that yeah. person was who gave you the card. That's so true. Yeah. I know people will make notes on the card of where they met and like met met for a drink at the at the lounge or whatever and talked yes. to them whatever and uh, yeah. Yeah. but i can guarantee you if there's no kind of signal or any kind of trigger for you to remember uh, anything yeah. about that person um then the car just goes like hmm that that kind of reminds me of a little trick i did this is just a tip for you guys uh when i'm at conferences and people hand me cards um if someone said please contact me i will uh, I've kind of forgotten what I do now because it's been a while since I've been in a conference, but the right hand side means, you know, contact immediately, turning the corner of their business card. The left hand side means 
uh, send them something, whatever it might be. And then ones I don't bend, I don't really care about. <laughs> it's kind of how I work when you're at a conference and you get, you know, a hundred business cards from people. Yep. Um, just a little tip for, for people, because sometimes you can't write on every business card because sometimes they're black or you can't write easily on a card unless they're white and, and not in a matte finish. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Okay. So, so um, back so, yeah, to business picture, cards. yeah, the picture part of it. Um, yeah. Definitely personal preference, but I think it's handy just as if you're handing cards out, people, if number one, if they keep your card, great. They'll, then they'll be able to remember you uh, a little easier. Yeah. Um, exactly. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, one of the things also is that you should be following the rules and regulations of your uh, area. You know, do you have to put your brokerage um, name on it? I'm going to guess the answer is yes. Do you have to put the brokerage address on it? Probably. Different regions are different. Um, do, do you have to put certain designations on your card? Do it. So you have to know the rules of your area and follow them across the board on business cards and everywhere else. Right, Terry? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. no, for sure. So I also think when I remember I talked about, I said crappy business cards. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very subjective term, of course. I guess but, it is. Um, <laughs> I, when you're giving somebody a business card, more than likely you're in a scenario where you're meeting for the first time. Yeah. And that's an impression. So you only get one chance to, and the, the business card is a reflection about how you run your business. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. You can argue with me about that one if you want. Not you, but. You know, <laughs> I can argue. You <laughs> but I I always think the, the marketing materials that you put out into the world are a reflection yeah. of how you operate your business. Yeah. And so why not take that extra step and just get a nicer card, a better, a little, you know, a bit of better quality card. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the cost isn't that, like, can you... Yeah, you have an know. incredible card and every single time I'm with Terry and he hands his card out whether, wherever we are out for dinner or wherever and he gives his card over every single time they go, I've never seen a card like this this is beautiful <laughs> now your beautiful card costs yeah. you do you remember how much you paid uh no I don't actually the sleeve I think if I remember correctly because we have a special sleeve yeah I think the sleeve is 75 cents because it's it's foil embossed yeah, it's gorgeous and stuff like that. So I think the I think the I think it's seventy five cents, but I don't care even if it's like two dollars or like right. You know, it's the impression. Yeah, it's whatever. Like, it doesn't matter how much it costs. Yeah, you know, it's a reflection upon you and and the and the services that you provide, right? Well, I guess that's the same. And and honestly, because um, you're people listening on podcasts, you cannot see Terry's business card, but his actual card is quite thick card stock. Yep. And then it goes into a sleeve that is gorgeous and embossed. So every single card. So imagine handing this over and it's this, not this normal business card. So it's a gorgeous card. Yeah, you did a really got, great job. Yeah. They, um, my designer, Kim Vizi put it together for me. Yeah. Kim did a fabulous yeah. job. If anyone wants info, just contact us. We'll let you know. Um, so she did a great job on the design. Yeah. And then you got them made somewhere else, though. We right? got them printed in Vancouver, I think. But the um, we did the gold embossing. We did a matte finish. We also did spot gloss on it. Um, yeah. And then we did the the gold the gold edging as well. Yeah. So it's just like there's multiple layers of things going on in this card. Yeah. People, that's probably over some people's head, but they look, just look gorgeous. <laughs> They're beautiful. They feel um, rich. People don't like want they, to throw them away. No, because they're gorgeous cards. And so, you yeah. know, it, food for thought for agents. And then on the flip side of a business, not the, I don't actually mean the flip side of the business card, <laughs> <laughs> but the information is also critical on a business card. And then again, watch our other podcasts because we go into this in more detail. We'll probably talk again because I've talked for 30 years to businesses about what to put on business cards and how to set up your business appropriately. So if you, if it was Terry and you as another agent and you're computing for business and Terry brings this really professional business card to the client, to the listing appointment, let's say all the marketing materials are professional. Um, he does, he doesn't take pictures with his camera, his own uh, phone of the um, location. He looks very businesslike. Like he's a true professional. 
And then another agent has this flimsy card that has their Yahoo email on it, no mm-hmm. website, uh, and their cell number, which is full. I can't tell you. Here's another thing. This drives me bonkers. And I don't think I've ever mentioned this to you because we make a lot of calls to agents. And I cannot believe how many times I've called someone and their voicemail is full. No. Really? <laughs> yes. I don't think I've ever told you this because it just, it's shocking to me. It's like, you are a agent. You cannot have a full voicemail because you don't know. Maybe I'm not going to text you. And I'm like, oh, well, that's weird because I'll, I'll call you tomorrow. Oh, it's still full. Oh, I'll call you next week. Oh, it's still full. And you don't know that because you don't know how to check your voicemails. Like it makes no sense. Okay. So please, that's another tip for you. Please make sure you have enough storage in your system for anyone's voicemail messages or have them auto delete after so many weeks or days after you've listened to them. It makes no sense. Um, Oh my gosh, I went on a rant. Okay. So back to the the business card, your mobile number that you answer, (laughs) or we can leave a message and respond to text messages as well. Right. Correct. What, um, what do you think about QR codes on business cards? Yeah, I am. Well, I, I think it's not like you're a plant in the audience, but uh, you guys can't see it. I'm holding up a QR business card that I have. Um, so what about and, QR codes on just your regular business card? What do you think? I, you know, I have mixed feelings about the QR codes. and I guess it depends on where it's sending people to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, what Terry's talking about, so the difference is between my card, which the whole card is a QR card, card or a, a business card that's a piece of paper that has a QR code. I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't see many of those. Do you see very many of those? No, I've, I got, uh, no, I don't see very many people doing that, but it's a, it's an opportunity for sure. But I tell them, about, tell them about your o- OVU card. I will tell yes. you guys about the business card. Yes. I so, but the, but there's also two sides of things. So let's go back to real estate agent business cards. So now you have two types of business cards, I believe. So when you go do a showing, and this is we're probably going to get people commenting on this, and I don't understand why people think it's a problem. But I'm on Facebook groups with agents, and I see people commenting about the old school way of when you go into a uh, showing and you leave your business card on the counter. I think it's, it's incredibly good to do that. Shows you're there. Like, can you explain that a little bit when we talk about leaving business cards, what your thoughts are? Because I see a lot of agents saying that's so old school and stupid, and I like I think it's a good idea. But let's hear Terry's. Yeah, so where 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 I work, it's kind of expected to leave your business card. Number one, it proves that you were there. Yeah, and you just didn't give your clients the lockbox code, and they they went in by themselves, which is a totally a contravention of our code of conduct. Yeah, uh, don't yeah. do that. Um, it does happen though, so it proves that you actually were there. And then um, I've had. I've had clients on my listings where we used a lockbox on it and then they would call me and say, Hey, the agent didn't leave a card. And they were angry that the agent didn't leave a card. Right. right. So, yeah. um, but um, it costs nothing to do. So why, I don't understand why people are even complaining about this. Yeah. Leave a card. Yeah, for sure. Do you, you don't leave your fancy card though. Well, yeah, not with the sleeve on it, but uh, not with the sleeve, but yeah. the, you just leave the, you, you leave the sleeve for real people yeah. <laughs> and then the other ones you just you just yeah. put the card on the table yeah no for sure the okay. um i know some agents that make they make special cards and they the, it'll look like their regular card but mm-hmm. it'll just say thank you for letting us come to your home today to view it oh okay nice yeah that's so, smart too yeah. but so i do not bad it's yeah it's just um you know a courtesy of, of leaving your card when you go do a showing i i don't understand when i was there was a Facebook feed about this and there was people saying, what a jerk this guy, why do you leave a card? He's trying to get the business from the, the listing agent. Like, that's not the reason for it. Like, <laughs> like, hello. Yeah, I can see <laughs> right? that. If, especially if the buyer's agent has a nicer card than you. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 Then maybe. Like, oh, geez, look at this nice card. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. but, uh, I've never heard of in 20 years, anybody getting a listing because they left a really nice business card and their list and their sellers fired them. Yeah, right. That makes no sense. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. So 
we're going to talk a little bit about digital cards because you have one too after I got it I showed Terry and you have one as well so there are a ton of digital cards and what that means is like I know you guys can't see it who are listening to this podcast but I've got a a, a plastic card that I don't actually I personally don't carry business cards around I am not an agent. I just help agents. So my business is different. I think you guys need the physical cards for some things. Um, but just thinking about it, like this is a beautiful card. It's got my logo on the front. It's got my name on the front. And it's got a QR code, QR code that is embossed and beautiful and gold. Everything like this looks like a fancy card. So when... If, if anyone's listening to this, um, I research everything to death. And so I wanted the digital card to work properly. And in my brain, if you've been following me for any length of time, when someone scans the card, does it end up in their contacts? Not in the contacts of the digital card, but in your contacts. And some... And people don't understand this. Some end up in the contact of the digital card system, and then you have to manually enter it into your contacts. Many do that. I, I must have tried about four cards before I found this one. It's called OVU. I don't even know if I say that right. O-V-O-U. And um, I think the card, I, I don't really remember. I've had it now for a number of years, but it's, I think it was like around a hundred and some odd dollars to get this. And I don't, know if I pay for it annually I would I don't care again I don't think you do you and I about costs if something works pay for it right nothing in this world is for free and if it's for free there's a reason for it they're taking your data they're selling your data they're doing something or they're you're just in a, in a trial of it um, but the OVU card I love so I can figure it people can scan it but if you come by I can tap my my card on your phone and it will add my contacts to your phone and I'll get them a notification and you'll have an option to share your contact information with me as well. So it's super cool. I love this uh, OVU card. And one of the things, again, podcasts I can't show, but what's interesting when you scan it, it goes to a, um, actually I should log on and tell you, <laughs> tell you guys what it does. OVU. Let's see if I, oh no, I can't, I can't show you. Forget it. Um, it goes to a landing page on OVU that has um, a little video of me saying hi, it has links that every person when I'm at a conference would want to know about a copy of the presentation, uh, some downloads and some other checklists and other things that I am consistently talking about. So everything is on that page. So I don't have to update my business card ever. I update the landing page. And it's kind of like, I think some agents use Linktree. It's similar, like Linktree is just a like a landing page where your information is. This is better, I think, than Linktree, but because I just have to have this one card and I update whenever I need to, I update the information on the landing page. Any comments about that, Terry? No, it's good. Um, I think like for me, I like the idea of having both. Yeah. If I want to give somebody a tangible piece of uh, printed material, I can. Yes. But if it's someone who's tech savvy and says, oh, I don't want to carry a card around, I just bring on my OVU and say, here, tap and you're good to go, right? So That's right. Um, yeah. And it, and it literally says in the notes that it came from OVU. So you'll always know where they got the card and the date, I think, is on there as well. Mm -hmm. And so it's a pretty cool system. I'm just looking it up now. Okay, yeah. So my... Um, my public view, I'm just going to go look. Yeah. It, so I have all my social media links on there. I have a, a link to book a complimentary review with me, uh, a video to watch for agent training. That's free. Uh, some checklists, our YouTube channel, um, testimonials and a video of me just talking about systems and things. And then of course the important stuff, phone number and email and website. OK, so I love I love the digital card and I find it extremely useful and I use it. This is just an FYI. This is different than probably what you guys, but I speak at conferences. So I might be at a conference with 500 people in um, 
the room and I, I can't, I'm not handing out cards, but what I'll do is I'll take that QR code, I'll put it on the presentation on the slide and I'll just tell people to take a, uh, a camera image in and, and then it adds me to their contacts. It's pretty cool. Yeah, good idea. Okay, yeah. yeah. And, so, um, yeah. So we, we like that you were talking about before, you do a lot of researching and et cetera, et cetera. Oh. And at one point in time, there was a, a metal business card of it. Well, they still they still are. <laughs> yes. Yes. Remember what happened at the airport? So I... <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. And so I did get it because I wanted to stand out, too. Um, and I didn't really do the sleeves like Terry. So I bought these yeah metal business cards and they were cool. But every time I would hand it to someone, they'd make a joke about drugs <laughs> as well. And I'm like, okay, that's not really what I was going for. That wasn't even in my radar when I got the metal cards. And and then they weighed a lot. So if I right, took a yeah. stack of business cards with me to a conference, I like they weighed a lot. And it, you know, luggage is expensive by weight. And yeah. then I got um, what happened at the airport? Every time you go through security. Yeah, because it would be in my carry-on. It was a big block of steel. I'd get stopped because it's like, <laughs> yeah. what has she got? I ended up recycling the business cards because they were not useful and they were so heavy. And really, I've just come across this OVU one after I did all this research and testing, and I've now been using it for probably, th I don't even know. Do you remember how long it's been? Three or four years? Yeah, at least, yeah. At least that, yeah. So anyhow, if you're looking for a digital business card uh, that looks nice, uh, check out OVU, O-V-O-U. Uh, any parting uh, shots, Terry? Well, all I can do is if you are using printed business cards, don't cheap out on them. It's like, oh, gosh, like you, you can go, okay, well, I'm going to get a thousand cards for 200 bucks. Yeah. Okay, spend 400 bucks. Get some yeah. better cards or spend 500 bucks, whatever, whatever the number is. It's yeah. such a little amount of money to actually present yourself in a better light. And you might get some really cheap ones that you just, you know, when you do buyer tours, those are the ones you leave at the other homes just to show you that you were there if you want to save a few yeah. pennies on, on per card. Yeah. But if you're going to present your card to a potential client, it has to be, has to be nice. Yeah. Well, yeah. and, you know, I was just thinking of something when you were saying that is that, I talk to agents who switch brokerages a lot. Mm -hmm. So every time you switch a brokerage, it's going to cost you money. So that's food for thought as well about, um, you know, why are you switching? We actually, you know, we should have a topic about that on one of our podcasts about brokerages. people who switch brokerages all the time and mm -hmm. the costs involved. And one of those costs would be you have to get new business cards every single time right correct and so you just spent 200 bucks and then you leave in a year and you spent another 200 bucks and then you leave in six months and then you gotta spend another 200 bucks sometimes that's covered in the fees but they usually give you a cheapo business cards right yeah they'll go we'll give you some free business cards and you get 200 of these really awful looking cheap cards <laughs> yeah and okay and here's oh my gosh and what's on the business card that they provide their email address the brokerage, yeah, email the brokerage email address they have given you. <laughs> if you don't know why I'm saying do not do that, I want to swear right now. Do not use it. Do not use a brokerage CRM. Do not use a brokerage email. Do not use the cards that they give you. Please go back and watch the other uh, podcasts we've done on email addresses and the importance of it and owning your own data. And it's so, 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 so important. Okay, so I almost said that was the last thing we we're going to talk about. But um, any <laughs> other things you want to talk about, Terry, about business cards? No, I, uh, I, I'm a fan of printed business cards. Um, I think there's a place for them. Um, I'm yeah. also a fan of the electronic ones as well, where you get to scan it, tap it, do yeah. whatever. Yeah, it Place makes you look cool well. too. Yeah, <laughs> on top of things, right? But, um. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, but the, at the end of the day, for me, it's it's whatever your market like business cards are part of your marketing package. Yeah, the look and feel should be the same as all your other materials. Yeah, and um, hopefully, hopefully, you spend that little extra money to take it to the next level because I, I have a you can't see this. I have a stack on my desk about inch and a half thick of cards that I haven't put into my CRM yet. Yeah, but I can guarantee in ninety nine out of these hundred cards are just 
cheapy, like awful business cards. Yes. Mm, yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. So they, they don't impress me much. No. Okay. okay. Well, thank you again for your insights, Terry and everybody. And I'm going to add to our list of podcast topics about um, switching brokerages around and things Whoa. to consider. Yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So if you're stuck and piecemealing your business together, let's get you where you want to go. If you want help to do that, book a call with Agent Tech Mastery at agenttechmastery.com slash apply pod and it's absolutely free and possibly the best call you have ever had to change your business again www.agenttechmastery.com slash apply pod look forward to seeing